Welcome back Alpha Hunters. In this video, I'm going to break down the ratio back order or the back ratio order. So they are the same order, just sometimes you see them called the ratio back order or the back ratio order. So if I flop back and forth in the video, calling it the reverse of what I started out calling it, don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's still the same order. It's not a big deal. So we will start out by using the option strategy template to understand how the ratio back order is constructed. And then we will look at the order breakdown and understand where the break even point is and where the profit loss areas are. And then I will give my thoughts on the order and why I'm not really too keen on this order, but it serves a great purpose. And I will get into that a little later. Then I will show off the risk profile chart in the broker. So the ratio back order is going to have the same expiration date typically. Now this is the traditional ratio back order. So it's going to have the same expiration date, but the strikes are going to be different. And the bullish or bearish back order, they're going to start out with a credit vertical. So for the call side, it's going to start out with a bear call vertical. And then the higher leg, you're going to buy a call. Okay. I'll go into that a little bit more a little bit later. And then for the puts, we will start with a bull put vertical. And then the lower leg, we will buy a put to make it a directional play. So for the bullish back ratio, so we are obviously looking for a bullish direction of a stock. And then the cash flow is going to be traditionally a debit. So if you can make it a credit, don't come at me and be like, hey man, I made it a credit, dude. All right, I get you. Congratulations. But it's traditionally a debit. Uh, the loss is going to be anything below the break even. And the break even point is going to be the higher strike plus the vertical loss plus the premium. And the profit is then going to be anything above the break even. Then for the bearish back ratio, we're obviously looking for a bearish direction. And again, we'll have a traditionally a debit out for cash flow. And our loss is going to be above the break even. And our break even will be the lower strike minus the vertical loss minus the premium. And then our profit will be anything below the break even by expiration. Some of my thoughts on this order, real quick. Now, generally how this order is constructed is you take a credit vertical order and you turn it into a debit order with the one additional call or put that you are buying. Okay. And this is going to be a Delta play with theta going to be a big impact uh, for the negative side. Now, what this allows you to do is reduce the cost of your trade rather than just buying a call or put outright. You're allowed to use the credit from the vertical to reduce the cost of buying a call or put. But there's a downside to that is the break even is going to be farther away than just buying a call or a put position outright. But yeah, this is not my favorite strategy as I don't typically like to use strategies that make my break even farther away. But I am really excited about this strategy as I wanted to show off what it is like to use options in combinations to come up with great trading ideas and trading strategies and profitable areas and reduction of risk. And that's what I wanted to show off and kind of open your mind. Free your mind. So let's look at an example real quick. So we'll use a back ratio and we're expecting the stock to go up and the stock is currently at 155. And we'll use strikes 155, 160 and 165 with a bear call vertical. And we're going to look to buy then an additional call. And the call value at 155 is going to be worth 10 at 168 at 165 six and a half and the negative one and plus one that's just letting you know we're buying or selling at that specific strike so to get our net premium we will obviously take in a credit of two for this bear call vertical and then we will buy this call outright at 165 for a debit of six and a half and that will get us a net premium of four and a half of a debit and now let's figure out our break even, but we need one additional part. We can't just take our higher strike and add the debit. We need the additional loss of three from the bear call vertical. And how I got that is we have a $5 spread between the 155 and 160 strikes, but we're taking in a credit of two. So we take that five minus the two, we get a loss of three. So then to get our break even, we will add the 165 upper strike plus the loss of three plus the debit of four and a half. We will get our break even of 172.50 and our profit will be higher than the break even and our loss will be lower. So as you can see, 
If we were just to buy this 165 call outright, our break even would be 171.50. But since we have this bear call vertical and that loss of three, it pushes down our max loss and it also pushes out our break even point. So that is why I'm not really a fan of this. Now there are different ways you can set up this ratio back order. You can put the $5 spread of the bear, bear call vertical in the money, you'll collect more premium, which probably is what you want to look to do. But I just want to open up your mind, open up your mind, Neo, to the different ways you can use options in combination to create better risk managed trades and profitable type trades. So if you appreciate this breakdown on this example, give this video a like. And if you don't ever plan on using this strategy, just say nah in the comments. So here we are. We are going to look at doing a back ratio setup. We'll look at doing puts this time. We'll look at the put side since we just did a call example. So if I just right click on any strike here and I see the back ratio order template, so I can set that up and you will see that the higher strike in this, in this instance, right? The one, the one, the four, <laughs> the 476 strike, that's the one that is set that we are going to be selling and then we'd be buying two at the 475 okay so that's the traditional way to set up a back ratio order now what i'm going to do is delete this and i'm going to set up these legs individually give me one quick second Okay, so here we go. We have now a ratio back order set up here in the risk profile chart area. And what we can see, trying to zoom in a little bit, is we have what, and you know, we'll, I'm gonna walk through, actually, you know, I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna walk through how this is constructed, okay? So the first part of this, right, is the bull put vertical okay so we are selling this higher leg we're buying this lower leg here okay so that would be a credit on this trade on this transaction okay but we are then going to buy an additional put at a lower leg and I, and this is going to be at 474 instead of 475 so that's how you get this risk profile chart to look uh, bearish or profitable in the bearish direction. Now, what you'll notice is the purple line, that is a normal trade transaction or what the normal trade would look like in if you were just to buy a put outright, right? So if I turn off the bull put vertical, right? So that's how that is a normal put type of risk profile chart as long before the expiration date, right? Once you get to the expiration date, that's when it switches to this kind of line, this teal line. And what you notice that it, this has that the that buying a put outright doesn't have is this little dip area. So this will give you a greater max loss area and a wider range for that max loss than just buying that put outright, right? So we could buy that put for $267 that we can see down here. But since we did that bear or that bull put vertical, we actually have, and what I'm looking at is the teal number over here. So look at that teal number now, and it's negative 341. So that is a greater loss and in between that area, in, in that area is in between the 475 and 474 strike area, but that just gives us a greater loss in within that range. And so that's, that's another reason why I'm not a fan of it, but it does cost less to get into this trade, right? So our loss, if it winds up not moving down, our loss area or our loss would be 241 instead of 267. So there are some trade-offs here. I'm just not a fan of it because if I want to be if I do want to be that directional, then I would just buy a put or do some other trade. But it, I'm, I mean, you're just saving a little bit of coin to set up what would be 
a trade that has a greater max loss and it has a farther away break even by expiration. So that is why I'm not really a fan of this type of trade. I just like the idea of using the combinations of different trades to set up different things. Okay. So like another thing that we could actually, that you could do possibly in doing this is change this expiration date on the, on the loan put that you bought or the loan call that you would buy and make it more near term. That way it's cheaper and, and it would reduce how much you would have to pay out. Right. So that, that would reduce that. So if you want to really play uh, or be bull bearish or bullish like within a certain duration, then you could sell a farther route credit spread and then buy a shorter term call or put. But you just really need to know your risk tolerances and, th and those types of situations and understand what you're expecting out of the trade. But again, I'm just not a fan of these straight up on the same expiration, but you can definitely make some different use cases in combination and using different expiration dates. And that's all I really wanted to get through with this example on the back ratio. Okay. So if you need a better breakdown on calls and puts, click the video in the top left. Alrighty. Take care, Alpha Hunters.